Summary of the Golden Notebook by Doris Lessing The Golden Notebook by Doris Lessing is a complex book about the life, memories, and writings of Anna Wolfe in the 1950s in London and colonial Africa when she was in her late 20s and early 30s. The book goes back and forth between a linear story called Free Women, which is about Anna and her friend Molly, and Anna's four private notebooks. In The Black Notebook, she talks about the time she spent in Africa, the novel she wrote about it, and how hard it was for her to deal with the book's reception. In The Red Notebook, she talks about how she joined and left the British Communist Party, and in The Yellow Notebook, she starts writing a new novel. Free Women begins, there were only the two women in the London apartment. Anna, a skilled but shy writer, tells Molly, a loud and worldly wise actor, that everything's cracking up in the world. Molly's ex-husband Richard, a rich businessman who now hates socialist views that brought them together, comes to visit to talk about finding a job for their son Tommy, who has been moping around in his room for the last few months. He also wants help with his present wife, Marion, who has turned into a drinker because of all the affairs he has had. Tommy comes downstairs after hearing all of this to turn down his dad's offer. Anna talks to Molly about how she's losing interest in writing another book, how Richard tried to have an affair with her, how their communist friends are doing, and how she can't get over her married ex-lover Michael. The story jumps to Anna's four notebooks, into which she has divided herself. The Black Notebook starts with a summary of her first popular book, Frontiers of War, which she still thinks is not good enough and is naive. It then goes into the events that inspired the book. Anna decides to stay in occupied Central Africa during World War II, where she meets a diverse group of white socialists. She spends her weekends drinking with them at the Moss Hopi Hotel and ends up in a long, sexless relationship with the German refugee Willy Rod. The affair between George Hounslow, a white roadsman, and Marie, the African wife of the hotel cook, was the inspiration for her novel. However, she changed George into a version of the charming, cocky, Oxford-educated pilot Paul Blackenhurst, with whom she runs away on their last day at the hotel, the day before he dies in an accident on the airstrip. Molly was already an involved, if critical, member of the British Communist Party when Anna asked her to join. This is where the Red Notebook starts. Anna remembers how uncomfortable she was with the party's ideas and with the growing proof of the Soviet Union's horrible crimes against political activists. She also remembers the contradictions she saw when she went to East Berlin with Michael and when she went door to door in North London. The first thing in the yellow notebook, called The Shadow of the Third, is the draft of a book about Anna's life. Its main character, Ella, works at a women's magazine where she answers letters from readers that her boss, Drive West, doesn't think are good enough for his advice section. She is also writing a book in secret about a man who makes all the necessary plans for his death before killing himself because he realizes, that's what I've been meaning to do. Ella has an affair with Paul Tanner, a therapist. He starts spending every night at her house, but he also has affairs with other women and ignores his wife. He loses interest in Ella's work over time and makes it clear that he is just having a one-night stand with her. Ella is heartbroken when Paul moves to Nigeria out of the blue. The Blue Notebook is about Anna's meetings with Mrs. Marks, her psychotherapist. When Mrs. Marks asks Anna if she writes about their meetings in her notebook, Anna stops writing about them for four years. Instead, she collects newspaper articles about them. When she goes back to writing about analysis, she finds it hard to write because of all the violence and thinks Michael is going to leave her. When Mrs. Marks brings up Anna's diary again, she decides to stop going. In the next part of Free Women, a mean and sad Tommy goes to see Anna, thinks about how her artistic work is different from his father's, and then starts reading her notebooks, which makes Anna feel an extraordinary tumult of sensations. He doesn't understand why she separates and groups her thoughts, and he thinks she's being irresponsible and dishonest by keeping herself hidden from the world. He shoots himself in the head when he gets back to Molly's house. He is expected to die before morning. The Black Notebook is a record of talks with movie and TV directors who want to buy the rights to Frontiers of War. 
They want to change the story so that there is no racism and it takes place in England instead of Africa. Anna thinks about the myths that make leftists believe in the Soviet Union in the Red Notebook. In the Yellow Notebook, Ella's story continues. More than a year after she and Paul broke up, she is still obsessed with him, and she meets a handsome but rough-around-the-edges American leukotomy doctor. Their short, mechanical sex makes him understand how unhappy he is with his wife, but it doesn't make Ella feel any better about Paul. Michael stops his affair with Anna in the Blue Notebook, and Anna chooses to write down, as honestly as I can, every step of a day. Tomorrow. Her day is full of stress because she has to take care of Michael and Janet's every need. She also spends the whole day working for free at the party offices, reporting on bad books that she knows her boss John will print anyway and answering letters from bad writers. When she realizes that she can't change anything and that her work doesn't matter, she quits. She puts Janet to sleep and enjoys making dinner for Michael, but he never comes, which shows that their relationship is over. This whole text is crossed out, and she rewrites it quickly, calling it a normal day. In the third part of Free Women, Tommy escapes his attempt to kill himself, but he is left blind. He moves back into Molly's house, and as he spends all his time reading, writing, and talking with Marion, he starts to take over. Anna goes to see Richard, who goes on one of his usual sexist rants. She feels like she's starting to crack up on the train ride home, where she has to deal with the new friendship between her boarder Ivor, her daughter Janet, and Ivor's lover Ronnie, who doesn't pay rent and is soon kicked out of the house. Anna writes about a pigeon hunting trip she took in Africa in the Black Notebook. She also talks about her friendship with James Shafter, an American writer who got to the top of the literary world by making fun of other writers. Anna talks about a year of frenzied political activity after Stalin's death in the Red Notebook. At the end of that year, her fellow communists came to the conclusion that the party was rotten in a way that couldn't be fixed. In the shadow of the third from the Yellow Notebook, Ella starts getting a lot of unwanted attention from cocky men who think she will be happy to be their lover. She decides not to let men contain her desire and starts planning short stories to make sense of her problems. The Blue Notebook keeps going back to a long thought about psychoanalysis. Anna feels like the record of facts in the Blue Book isn't a true reflection of what she's been through, and she feels like she's losing the ability to say what she means with words. She talks about a repeated nightmare in which a figure takes joy in spite. In the fourth part of Free Women, Anna tells Marion, who has been caught at a protest, about the old rebels she met in Africa. Anna has a dream that a movie is being made at the Moss Hopi Hotel, which makes her understand that all of her memories of Africa were probably not true. At the end of the Red Notebook, there is a story about a teacher who believes in communism. When he goes to the Soviet Union, he learns that no one will listen to his advice. The Yellow Notebook stops Ella's story to write down ideas for 19 short stories or books, most of which are about men taking advantage of women. Janet goes to boarding school, and Anna has nothing to do. This is where the Blue Notebook picks up. She takes in an American writer named Saul Green, who is as sensitive and smart as he is selfish and rude. Because of Saul, Anna starts to have a lot of anxiety. Their relationship goes back and forth between peace and anger, political discussions over coffee and explosive fights in the bedroom. Anna's jealousy over the other women Saul sees and her choice to read his diaries only make things worse. Both of them say that the other person and themselves are crazy. Anna finds out that there are more than one Saul and more than one Anna, and she also starts to see parts of him and herself in each other. Anna starts to see the floor and walls move, and she goes back and forth between different thoughts and selves. One day, Saul suggests she start writing again, but she says she can't. She buys a pretty golden notebook, but Saul tries hard to take it for himself. Anna goes to the golden book by herself. She has a dream about Saul as a tiger, and as she thinks about her past, she learns that an invisible projectionist is playing it all back for her. Of course, this is also Saul, and they both understand that they have become a sort of inner conscience or critic for the other. She plans a new story about free women for the morning, and Saul tells her to start writing. 
In their last days together, they give each other opening lines. Anna gives Saul the image of an Algerian soldier on a hill, which becomes the first sentence of his successful novel. Saul gives Anna the dull sentence, the two women were alone in the London flat, which becomes the first sentence of her second novel, Free Women. Free Women is not an objective account of Anna's life as she wrote about it in her notebooks, but a fictionalization of the notebooks. The last part of Free Women is very different from the previous two parts, Janet goes to boarding school, and Anna drives herself crazy by sticking newspaper articles all over her room. When an American named Milk comes in, he makes her feel protected and cared for, but he also says that he is a feeder on women. He leaves after five days together. In the end, after Janet gets back from school, Anna decides to work at a marriage therapy center, Molly marries a progressive businessman, and Tommy is all set to follow in Richard's footsteps. About the author Doris Lessing was born in Iran and grew up on a farm in the colony of southern Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe. She went to a girls' school in Salisbury until she was 13. She never went back to school, but she continued to learn on her own by reading a lot during her teen years. Lessing left her terrible home to work as a babysitter and phone operator. During this time, she had a few stories published in colonial papers and wrote and threw away two drafts for novels. After being in relationships that didn't work out because of what she called a fever of erotic longing, Lessing got married when she was 19 and had two children. She soon left her new family because she wasn't happy with them. She spent her free time talking about books with the Left Book Club, where she met Gottfried Lessing, a German communist who was living in exile. Anna Wolf, the main character in The Golden Notebook, makes up this part of Lessing's life in her black notebook. Doris Lessing and Gottfried Lessing got a divorce in 1949, and she moved to London with their young son. Soon after, she released her first book, The Grass is Singing. In the next 10 years, she continued to write stories about her childhood in Africa and get involved in left-wing politics. Even though she stopped being a communist in 1954, South Africa and her home country of southern Rhodesia both made it illegal for her to go back in 1956. In the 1960s, Lessing's work became more psychological. In 1962, she released The Golden Notebook, which is still her best-known book. In the 1970s and 1980s, Lessing started writing about science fiction and Sufi mysticism. In the following decades, she wrote opera libretti for composer Philip Glass and a two-volume autobiography, among other things. At the age of 88, Lessing won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 2007 for her skepticism, fire, and visionary power. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.